this Saturday night live on GFL.tv. Roy Jones Jr. and TNT Promotions present a great night of boxing action headlined by the Pittsburgh kid, Paul Spatafora, and Solomon Egbermine, very tough uh, IBO Oriental champion, and we're looking forward to it. But Amanda coming on to help, to help us talk about it right now is a man who needs no introduction, but we're going to give him one anyway because he damn well deserves it. Former million-time world champion in the, any, every division he's ever stepped foot in. And, uh, you know, I don't have my facts right, but this guy is uh, a, a legend, current HBO blow-by-blow color, color commentator, and still one of the best fighters to ever grace the planet. And I'm talking about none other than Mr. Roy Jones, Jr. Roy. Mr. Hey, Jones, Mr. how you Jr. doing? As we can call you. How you doing tonight, my man? How you doing? Hey, I'm good. I'm good, man. I'm always there to be on the show with you guys. How y'all doing? Roy, hey, we appreciate it, man. I appreciate you you even saying that as well. We love talking to you. The last time we had you on the show, we didn't want to let you go. We got you back, man. And it's all about this Saturday night. I mean, first, if you don't mind, if you don't mind, we could just drop whatever questions on you here. You know, you're looking at it like this. We're going to be live tweeting. We're going to be live Facebooking uh, this event, watching it on GFL.TV. Uh, you're going down into West Virginia. Like I said, Paul Stadafora, former world champion, former, uh, you know, still undefeated, you know, coming out there trying to make an impact, trying to get his name back out there with the elite. And Solomon Egbermine, uh, you know, tough guy. I actually seen him fight uh, the guy who fought Michael Katsita, Caesar, uh, Amanon, in, in a sensational fight. This is a, an all-action war. But I got to ask you like this, man. On the on the banner, on the headlines, on the marquee, it just says Roy Jones Jr., what's going on? Is there any more Square Ring? Where everybody knows that was your promotional company. What's going on with Square yeah, Ring? Still, it's, it, yeah, Square Ring is still doing its thing, too. It's uh, still live. Uh, they got a few fighters representing their side, too. But I do Square Ring. I do a little bit of TNT. TNT. I do a little bit mainly um, just kind of talk with them. having a lot of shows where to go and tell me what's the best smart thing to do. And the smartest thing that ever was to do in the Pittsburgh area is to get Paul to the floor because that's my man. And I think Paul making a comeback is one of the biggest things that has happened to the sport in a long time. I know people don't want to give Paul a chance, but Paul is one of the best uh, just straight-up boxers that you're ever going to meet. Uh, Paul showed years ago that he could hang with the best when he went out and fought with Floyd Mayweather and showed that he's capable of being put in the ring with the best fighters around. Uh, and now I think it's his time, and, and, you know, I think people should quit ducking and dodging and do like Guerrero did. Come on, step forward. Guerrero started talking and telling people, hey, y'all want to fight the best? Come fight me. And he was right. And, uh, you know, he came. He fought Guerrero, which put up a very good, very game fight. And But that's the type of fights I want to see uh, Paul get now. So I think Paul is definitely somebody that's uh, a factor on the scene right now that he make for a lot of great fights with a lot of these guys, and I'm looking forward to it. Now, I got to ask you about his, uh, his opponent real quick, Roy. You know, Solomon uh, Egbermine. Egbermine, I, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing his name. He's a tough guy. I mean, for the comeback of, of uh, Paul Spatafora, you know, his last fight with Humberto Toledo, he's been out of action for two years. He had a couple tune-ups in 2010, you know, very sporadically there. You know, Egbermine, Egg, Egbermine is, is a tough guy. I mean, and, and for something to bring into, you know, West Virginia, close to the Pittsburgh area, um, it's a dangerous opponent. I mean, what was the the process in, in picking uh, Solomon for his uh, his opponent as actually trying to get him back up into the ranking? Well, part of it is Solomon Hunter was 13 in WBO. He's a former Olympian, so he's definitely a very high-qualified opponent. And we definitely need to find a qualified opponent to put him in front of us so that people understand that he's back and that he's for real. If you keep fighting guys with no name, then they're not going to take you serious. So to, to get them, we've got to take a chance. And I don't even like really feel like it's a chance because Paul was so good in his last fight that he could do anything close to that this time. I'm still not worried at all about him. Uh, don't get it wrong. Uh, Solomon is a tough competitor. Any time a guy was good enough to make it to the Olympics, he had to be pretty good. So you know he's not no chump, but that's good. We're not trying to bring the fight, the, the, the fans, the chump fights. We're trying to bring good fights. That's why we got, again, Money Lester Clay and a rematch against Emmanuel Lucero, which was a great fight down in Pittsburgh. So we just said it was so good, people want to see it again. So we bring them back again, and uh, it's just, that's just how we do. You know, we, we try to match them good so that people can pay their money, get what they want to see, and get their money worth for what they pay. Hey, Roy, I got to commend you on that, Roy. Oh, wait, oh, I, one, more, one more thing, Dawson. I'm going to pass you right back to Mike Dawson. I got to tell you like this. For your money's worth, you mentioned Monty Mesa Clay and Emmanuel Lucero. 
the first fight, magnificent. You know these guys are going to, you know, go balls to the wall in this next fight. And I just want real quick, you know, for plug-in purposes, it's a $13 pay-per-view. I mean, 13 bucks. you can watch it live on the day of the event, and you basically own it. You can watch it anytime right on GFL.TV. So that's the, the, the beautiful thing about this. If you guys are complaining you haven't seen Paul Spada for a fight in forever, get this. I think you're going to see the best one. I apologize, boy. I apologize, Mike Dawes. Proceed. Sorry about that, guys. Hey, no problem, man. Um, I, I kind of want to change the subject a little bit. I know, uh, you know, uh, a couple weeks ago with Emmanuel Stewart passing away, you know, you had some uh, hard you know, things to say. You had a lot, you know, a lot of good stuff to say. But you, I didn't really hear uh, a whole lot. I mean, I, there's other people that had to talk on on the air too and uh, speak their feelings for him. And you know, also a couple of days ago, we lost a hell of a champion and uh, you know, Hector Macho Camacho. Uh, can you kind of? You know, uh, shed you know shed more on Emmanuel Stewart, and uh, if you have any uh, thoughts about uh, Hector Camacho, if you could tell us. All right, well, for Emmanuel, fuck Emmanuel. Emmanuel was one of the better friends I had in the sport of boxing. Emmanuel could see guys long before the rest of the world saw guys. Emmanuel was one of the first people here in town to sign me as a professional when I came back from the Olympics. I had everything but agreed to everything Emmanuel said and signed the contract until my mom asked me to give my father a chance because he got me that far. So because of that, I had to uh, turn down Emmanuel's uh, offer and kind of give my dad a chance because he had got me so far. However, Emmanuel bought me a bag down with my name and everything else. So I carried that bag with me to every professional fight that I have, that I've had. And I still have my second quote bag that I have right now that still goes to every fight that I have. So I went through two crunk bags, and I'm still on the second one in my whole career. And the reason I did that was all in tribute to Emmanuel Stewart because I wasn't a crunk part of my contract, but I was a crunk part of my heart because he came down and offered me everything I could have asked for and some to turn professional. So with that being said, he also gave me some of the best advice as a professional boxer. So my head goes off, my heart goes out to the family. Emmanuel Stewart was definitely a great person, a great teacher, a great student of the game, and just a very, very good person to be around. As far as Hed Camacho goes, Hed Camacho taught me, taught me how to have a style about your English. Hed Camacho was the first one that put extra thought in the way that he would enter the ring. As far as his costumes, uh, what he wear, how he looked, he took pride in being prepared before the fight ever took place. When you saw Hector Camacho was dressed, you knew he meant business before the fight ever started. That taught me a lot about how to prepare yourself and how to dress yourself before you come in the ring. You don't see a doctor show up in a, in a fireman uniform because he ain't going to put out no fire. He's about to perform a search. But when he dressed up in, a, in, in, in his white and the way he has, the way he's dressed, you know that he probably can do some surgery just because of his clothes. So when Hector Camacho showed up the way he showed up, it told you that he's going to see something different. But he cared about how he looked. And that was the biggest thing he bought to ring for But not to mention, he also had some of the quickest hands I've ever seen in boxing. Yeah. Well, thanks, Roy. And uh, I, I got another question to ask. Uh, you know, you know, your last fight was in Poland with an eliminator for, you know, for the WC title uh, against another Polish champion. What, what's going on with that? Is that a, you know, is, are you going to. He still act, he's acting like he wants to fight. Uh, I don't know what their problem is, but he don't act like he wants to fight. And I know why he want to fight because the guy that Doug King had that fought him twice, I think, uh, beat him twice. So he ain't taking the challenge because I think I think he just knows that he ain't going to win it. But, you know, I mean, that's that's, that's what happens in boxing. A lot of fighters, duck, the good fighters, that's what you got to love about a Carrero. That's what I love about Nonito Donaire. That's what I like about, I love about Paul by the four. They're not looking for nothing easy. They'll fight in and everybody that's close to their weight class that has a name. And that's how Roy Jones always was and still is. If you've got a title, I want it. And if you come and bring it my way, I'm going to try to take it. And now I tell our team I'm going to succeed. But, you know, it wasn't nothing that the guy didn't want it, so I just left it alone. You know, I know I don't pay nobody to fight. I'm, I don't need nothing else. I don't, I'm going to it. But if I got the opportunity, of course I'll take it. Well, look, speaking of that, you know, you got you got this guy in Poland with the title. You got another guy without a title, without a handful of fights, you know, eight fights, I think, to his name, calling you out. It was supposed, you know, they were saying it was going to happen. It's not going to happen on and off again. Uh, Kimbo Slice. You know, if any oh, yeah. fight was, was to happen, which one would you want and why? I mean, do you uh, would, would you, do you think Kimbo I'm Slice in the States is better or what? No, I only want to fight for the for, for the Cruiserweight title because that's the only title that has eluded me in my career. That's really the only thing I'm kind of interested in. 
I'll fight for the title or fight against the title. Anything else, I'm not really interested in. I don't have enough of it. Uh, there's no sense in me wasting time. I have nothing else to prove. But if I get a fight to get me to or close to a title shot, I definitely would take that. Well, yeah, Darryl, anyway, my I, last question, real quick, my last question is, you know, going through, uh, you know, throughout your career, pretty much, you know, you had a good friend of yours that was com- com- coming up also, won a world title, he faded away for a while, I think he's made a comeback, I think it's still going against a guy named Cody Richard, that being Derek Gaynor, do you and Derek still real good friends, and uh, what do you think about him starting uh, his career? I was still friends, uh, Derek came to the only way of doing things, and my hat goes off to him for being with his best. I hope the best for him. Uh, we, don't, we don't really operate like that no more, but I do wish the best for him. Hey, boy, how uh, you doing? You. This is Ali Vasquez. How you doing, how you doing Vasquez? Yeah, good. Mm-hmm. Hey, boy, I, I got a question. Uh, you know, you've had your promotion for quite some time now, promoting fighters. Uh, do you feel that you set the blueprint for fighters promoting, like, you know, like Oscar De La Hoya and Floyd Mayweather and, and guys like that? Yeah, I think I did. I think I did. Because I was the first one to start doing it by myself and to be uh, verbal about it and not be afraid of what the other promoters thought or not be afraid to rough nobody each other with it. So, yeah, I think I said, I think I, I, I said, I started it, yes. And, um, you know, uh, there's a fighter that you fought before, Glenn Johnson, who's coming out of retirement again. Do you have any interest in maybe, you know, getting a rematch with him now that he's coming back? All, all, always. I would love to fight him again. Always look for a rematch with Glenn Johnson. Okay. Thank you, Roy. Thank you. Hey, Roy. It's Chris Guns. How you doing, man? How you doing, Chris? Pretty good. I wanted to know how come you chose to go with Alton Merkerson when when you uh, had the chance to go with Manny when you and your dad split up. Uh, I didn't really have a chance to go with Manny when, when me and my dad split up. Manny already had kind of a stable of fighters, and Manny had chose and took Jim McClellan as a middleweight, so I wasn't going that way. Uh, I'm not the type of guy that I was the type guy. I was brought up as a fighter like a game rooster. You feel me? I didn't go and get on the same team as other game roosters that were close to my weight. You understand what I'm coming from? In other words, I couldn't have been Floyd Mayweather and uh, and uh, Asian Brawler because I didn't have a Floyd Mayweather unless I got to that point because I didn't want to have to come across that problem. If I, when I got on top, if you was I, in close to my weight class and you thought you was good, I want to fight you. So no sense of me being friends with nobody. My dad tried to make me be friends with Reggie Johnson. I said, no, I'm not going to be his friend because if he gets the title, I want it. Sure enough, he got the title. We both had the title at the same time, and I wanted his too, so I went and got it. But had I been with my dad, didn't want to do it, I would have became friends with him. Then when they asked me to fight him, I had to say no, but he didn't want to fight me because my dad would have taught him how to deal with me because he was going to be unspoiled me so much. If he spoiled me enough, he's going to learn how to deal with me. So I was like, no, I'm not going for that because I want to fight him if he gets to be camp before I do. He got a mm-hmm. champ before me. He uh, ended up losing that title, but once we got light heavyweights, he became champ after me, and we didn't want us to do unification, so we did. And I took his title like I knew I would. But I didn't have friends like that, so I couldn't go to Manny because he had other guys too close to my weight player. And I didn't want no friends. So, no, I'm not going to go there and fall with them and teach them how to deal with me. No, they want to fight, I'll fight. So when uh, we split, the only person I think that didn't have nobody really in my weight player because Donald Curry had stopped was Coach Merck. And and I just wanted to know. I I know you can't really compare you and Ricky Hatton. You're, you're an amazing no, fighter. Ricky no. was pretty good. Well, but when you well, Ricky I Hatton and, and, and I can make some comparison because I understand his situation. But Ricky Hatton also has a lot more to deal with than I did because Ricky Hatton had to deal with you know the alcoholism and stuff like that. Plus he gained a lot of weight between the fight, so he took a lot out of himself. I only did it that one time where I gained that much, and it was muscle. And look how much it took out of me. So imagine what what it was taken out of Ricky from the time to go up and down, along with dealing with the other issues he had. So I understand Ricky tried. He did give a try. And if it don't work, he did the right thing and stopped. But I also agree with the guy that said he chose the wrong opponent. He should not have taken a guy that she had the pot shot again. He should have taken a guy that was going to be right there in front of him all night, and that he probably could have taken out. But when he said a guy that, you know, somebody that fought my guy that's a pot shot, uh, Ricky had another pot shot type of guy. He's a banger. If he don't bang this guy earlier, he's going to have problems long run always. Thank you, Roy. Appreciate you and all your time. Thank you, brother.
Hey, Roy. Let me ask you. Let me. I want to. I want to go right back to the card. I know there's some other guys here on the line. They they need to not you know put their big boy big boy pants on and just jump in. Um, I got to ask you this, Paul Satterford. You know, look at like us, forty six and zero. Uh, how? I mean, when you working with him right now, you trying to get him back to the prominence. What does Paul Satterford have to do? Like when you know when you're covering HBO, when you're you're calling the HBO event. And, and, you know, they have the 147-pound title picture. How do you get Paul Spadafore's name back into that that section there? It's just like what we're doing right now. You put him in against a tough guy, he beats a tough guy, he becomes ranked in the top 10 opening. Then we put him in against somebody that's ranked in the top 10. He takes them out. He's got to find a way back in the pitch. It's just that simple. Uh, he's willing to find a way back in the pitch, but he's got to find a way back in the pitch. Just, just that simple. Nothing that we can do. No, I'm going to give it to us. We're not going to give it to him. We've got to find out we're making the picture, so that's what we're going to do. That's, that's what we're looking forward to. Uh, and, if can fight, and if he can fight his way, if he can fight his way, if he can fight his way through all the things that Paul is part his way through, there's no way nobody can tell me he can't fight his way to the top two. So I'm not worried at all. I know it takes probably a little more time than we want it to take, but my thing is that we keep him busy, that he keeps fighting until he gets the opportunity, so that when the opportunity comes, he'll be ready. But I know he's not ducking and dodging nothing. He ain't trying to turn out no names. He don't really care who comes. They can bring any of them that don't want it. It's like last time when they said Tim the brother didn't have an opponent. I told him they need one. Paul willing, really, uh, willing, ready, and able. All they got to do is let us know something. So anybody that have a problem or anybody that think they want it, Paul ready for it, just come on. And I have put that out to a lot of them. And I will keep on putting it out. And I, and I, and I hope so. I'm a, and I'm a big fan. And, Roy, I got, I got the utmost respect for you for staying by such a talented fighter in Paul Spadafore. And I know, you know, game knows game in this situation. Uh, real quick, I got Mark Abrams and Ruth DeStefabau on the line. I want to give them a real quick opportunity to uh, either say hello or a quick question for you. Two quick, right. two, two quick things, Roy. Um, I, yep. I, I, it's the first part, part of the car. I don't know if this was asked. But have you, um, I mean, you're a guy who you, you've stayed out of trouble for, you know, no, we've never really read anything about Roy Jones being in trouble for the 25-plus years that you've been in the limelight. Have you, have you sat down with Paul and had life discussions with him about what he's been yes, through? I have. Yes, I, yes, yes, I have. I had have, have more discussion with him before we signed, before we signed than I did after we signed him because I have been telling him for a few years that, look, I know how the game goes. But you gotta stay clean of the other the people around you. Uh, the people around you gotta be the right kind of people, or you're not gonna make it because you ain't got for a few more years left. Once you realize that, he said, "You know what? Well, you're right. I'm really working." So we went ahead and went to work. But yes, we had plenty of discussions about that. We had plenty of discussions about his career, about his lifestyle, about the people he hang around. We had plenty of all kinds of discussions. So yes, we have talked over and over again. And that's why I'm with him, and that's why I'm trying my best to mentor him and get him away to go so that he don't worry about this no more. He's had so many stops and starts in his careers. Why? Why do you think now that you know we've seen uh, you know the, the worst of what's uh, you know what's going on in his life? Say that one more time. You know he's had so many stops and starts in his career. You know he's got you know he's won some fights. He's got in trouble again. Well, why do you think all of his problems are, are maybe behind him now? Um, I think they're behind him because not only does he realize where he was going, and he realized now that. He can have more faith in the people that are around him and what we say. You know, before before he had people around that were making promises, I guess, but never been over the problems. So once you get tired of hearing all the promises, you know what you do? You go back to the trouble that you came from. Right now he's not hearing promises. He's getting fights. This is the second fight already uh, this year, and he's looking to start next year with a bang, too. So he's building momentum. He's still active. He has a son who he wants to prove to that he can be the man. You know what I'm saying? Because the son always comes to me and says, man, you're a hero. You're the greatest. I said, yeah, I am, but your dad is also a hero, and your dad going to be the greatest because he got one of the greatest comeback stories of all time. So if we can stick with your dad and keep your dad doing the right thing, your dad going to become a hero. Just watch. So I think Paul wants to live up to that. You know what I'm saying? I think Paul wants his son to see him as a success, not a failure. So he got everything to live for now. And, and if I may, just a, a quick story. to take me one minute. About 15 years ago, I met you. I used to work in the USBL in Atlantic City when you were playing basketball. And uh, you actually, uh, my father came to one of the games, and you actually uh, spent an hour talking to him after the games because you saw my father's Rottweiler on his keychain. And I thought that was right. the coolest thing. You guys even talk boxing. You guys are talking dogs for an hour and a half. How are all your animals doing? And, 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 
Miami's doing good, man. I still got a few dogs, you know, a few cows, horse. Uh, they're all doing good, you know. Terrific. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I think, uh, Roy, as always, man, we appreciate your time. And, uh, you know, I, I was going to give Rufus an opportunity to say hello, but nobody's jumping in. Um, All right. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate it. I, I enjoyed being on the call. This, I mean, this Please. Saturday, what can we expect your role as far as this Saturday night, man? Are we going to be able to see you on the pay-per-view? Oh, yeah, you should be able to see you on the pay-per-view. They'll probably do an interview with someone, I'm sure. I look forward to doing an interview um, because I'm just going to keep it like it is. And I'm, I'm telling you right now, the two most impressive people, in the, uh, or two, two of the most impressive guys for that particular style have been to me, Paul Stutterford and uh, Robert Guerrero, because Guerrero fought a, ter- a tough fight to begin against a very tough uh, and befitting opponent. That was a great fight by both fighters, but I always said the GOAT and Paul Stutterford reminded me of one another, so I look for the opportunity to even see them two in the ring because I think that is going to be one hell of a fight. You understand me? I know Guerrero ain't definitely dodging nothing, and I know Paul ain't definitely dodging nothing. So I so look forward to that fight in the long run. But you will hear from me on, on the pay-per-view, I'm sure. They'll do an interview, I'm sure. And I look forward to a wonderful, terrific card. You got um, Jericho fighting on the card, uh, who's from Yorktown, Ohio. He got a, a good fight. I forget the guy's name. He's fighting Lucero. He no, Money fighting Lucero. So Money and Lucero is definitely going to be a good fight. Uh, it's going to be a great fight from start to finish. They had a good fight before the paper, and I'm looking for an even better fight from this time. So if you got a chance, go to GFL.TV, and you don't want to miss this weekend. All right, Roy Jones Jr., legend, uh, at Real Roy Jones Jr. on Twitter. Follow him. Roy, I mean, we'd love to get you back on the show, whether it's to talk about your upcoming fight, just talk to you. Or uh, you know, right. talk about. I hope uh, this is a, this is a good card, man. We can't wait to uh, see it this Saturday night, and uh, hopefully yeah, there's you, a lot man. more to come. I uh, appreciate it, y'all. And tell all to you, I'm not doing this. Call me, call more, 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 find me, and we get back on. My man, God bless you, bro. Have a great night. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank sure. you. Uh, all right, there you have it, Roy Jones Jr. Uh, always a, a pleasure to speak to him. And like I said, this Saturday night, I mean, there's plenty more uh, to go. You know, it said you got a ton of fights this weekend, but uh, you know, GFL place to be. Some good stuff. We're actually going to be joined uh, in the next few moments by the guy we've been talking mostly about with Roy, and that's Paul the Pittsburgh Kid, out of Florida, and uh, he'll be joining us momentarily. Uh, we'll also be joined by Monty Mesa Clay and uh, Jake Jericio. He'll be also joining us. He's uh, um, a highly touted lightweight prospect, so he'll be on here from Youngstown, Ohio. He'll be on here talking to us. Um, okay, I, I get it like this. Before we bring Paulie Spadafora on the line, you know, the Pittsburgh kid, I know um, Abrams was talking about he's at, you know, had a trouble pass, stops and starts. 46 and 0 still. Nobody's been able to figure out to beat him. I mean, know he likes to go rounds, but uh, I mean, what do you guys think as far as his coming to Saturday night and where he goes from there? It's now or never for Paul Stato Four. He needs to stay active, stay on the winning side, get a top ten contender if he can, and just go forward because he's not getting any younger. He's what, thirty seven years old now? So he's not the Pittsburgh kid anymore. So he needs to you know, he needs to get on that bike and, and ride as fast as he could now. Yeah, he he definitely needs to fight, you know, uh, have this fight just coming up and get another fight pretty quick. I mean, you know, we, we've heard this before about uh, I'm making a comeback, I'm making a comeback. You know, you come, you come back, you, you have three fights or so, and then you take a year off. You know, that's not a comeback. That's uh, that's basically just getting a few uh, bucks in your pocket and just doing whatever. Um, you know, it, it, he needs to fight smart and he needs to fight this guy, you know, jump in there. And uh, and get a big name. That's what he needs. That's what has to happen. If not, he's going to end up like Ricky Hatton. No, and I and I and I, and I agree. I mean, look, we're gonna we're gonna get an opportunity to find that out right now. What's going on? Uh, and I'm, I believe so, Tim. I believe we got our uh, next guest on the line, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, let me. Well, wait. I got I got to disagree. I got to disagree on that case. I got to get to disagree on that case for for the reason is because. Ricky Hatton, though Ricky Hatton had already been beaten. He had already been. He had already. Yeah, been but, you know, I'm talking He's about. I'm talking that. about the way the way that you know he lived his life. You know, at three and a half years off, 
and then coming back like that. You know, I mean, coming back tough. You know, at least Paul's doing the right thing by fighting, you know, fighting, you know, kind of tune up fights. But if he keeps up, he keeps on taking time off and then fights somebody good, it's, it's going to catch up with him. He's 37 years well, old. Let's, 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 instead, of, instead of getting into that, I mean, look, uh, uh, Egg Barime, I think, is a very tough challenge. I think he's, you know, he's, like Roy said, he's ranked pretty high out there. And, and I think this is the toughest challenge since his comeback. You know, I'm, uh, all due respect to Humberto Toledo. Uh, you know, got a rugged guy here. But, you know, without further ado, I want to welcome on to the show. It's been about two years since we spoke to him on this show. It might have been a little bit uh, a little bit less than that. But we're not counting. It's just it's always a pleasure to have Pittsburgh PA's only own, the Pittsburgh kid, uh, former. And he's a guy who's never been defeated. So it's, it's kind of hard to say somebody's a former world champion. But he's a former IBS world lightweight champion. And I know he's going to try to dominate and take over the 140 or 147 pound division, whatever it is. The undefeated, Mr. Paul Spadafora. Welcome back to ATG Radio. How you doing tonight, champ? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me, guys. Hey, Paul, it's a pleasure. Hey, man, look, we're look here. Here's the thing, is man, we're we're a bunch of boxing guys in the boxing media world. We're boxing fans, obviously. You know, you've made a name for yourself in this business. You've made a you made your mark, basically. Thing is, is that you know this for a fact. Come, what comes with what comes with the fame, the fortune, the the agony, the pain, all that stuff. You know, comes a lot of questions, and that's what we have right here, champ. We got a lot of questions because you look at like this. You're an enigma in this sport, man. You're 46 and 0, a former world champion. We don't know half the time if you're coming and going. But this Saturday night, you know, GFL TV, the world has an opportunity to see you, you know, perform. Uh, Hopefully at your at the finest level you've ever performed, but we gotta ask it like this: Is we've heard it before, but is the Pittsburgh kid back, and is he back for good? Oh yes, oh, I mean I'm definitely back. I'm I mean I'm training good. I'm taking it one day at a time. You know what I'm saying? And uh, just getting ready for this fight. I'm preparing for this fight on Saturday, and uh, the, like Roy, like Roy and then they they uh, stepped it up, and I needed that. I know I know it's like. What, well, how did they really step it up? Like, like I, I consider myself a uh, a fighter, honestly. I really do. You know what I mean? So I can't think of it none, none else. But they stepped it up. My opponents. This is the best opponent that I have. I think this is the best opponent I had since I fought Dorn. That's that's a long time ago. And I'm and I'm ready for the challenge. I've been I've been in the gym. I've been training. And I'm coming off a, a good win, a pretty good win, and I'm just getting ready for the um, fight on Saturday. And, and you know what? I agree, and I, and I say like this, Paul. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be real with you as a, as a huge, and I'm, I'm gonna be real. I'm a huge fan. I'm Pennsylvania born and bred. I'm actually, you know, from Philadelphia, but you know, always growing up and watching this sport. You know, the name Paul Scott for it, you know, six, which is you got a great record. Um, I, I, I gotta ask you like this: What is this fight with Edgar Nine leading to? You know what I'm saying? I mean, is this gonna be? You know, you go in there, you get a victory. Are you going to take a break off? I mean, I know I heard some stuff. You and uh, Mike Acre had a bad split, I guess. I mean, it's basically that right there. What, uh, what, what went down with you and your former, your longtime manager, Mike Acre? I mean, how's that affecting your career at the moment? Right right now, right now I'm good, and I put, I put that in the past, you know what I mean? Like, like we, we we left each other, we left each other, and that was it, you know? And, uh, and, and uh, Roy picked me up, thank God, and uh, I'm back doing what I, what I love to do. And that, that that's another thing. Like people don't even understand. Like why I was how why I was gone for so long? How many fights did they promote? I wasn't. There was nobody promoting. I, I was never. If I, it ain't like I wasn't wasn't in the gym. But but when but whenever there ain't no fights coming on, let's face the facts. I, I I I battled with alcohol and drugs, and then that's what happened. You know, if you don't have nothing to look forward to, you got all this time on your side, and that's what happened. And. Now it's like I put that I put that behind me. I got a good team be, behind me now, and um, everything that they said they're doing and they they're, they've been doing. Now, now, Paul, I don't want to pass you to the rest of the guys that are on the line. Now, look, man, I know you. You can box in your sleep. That's the one thing you mentioned: the drugs and alcohol. I mean, you could box in your sleep, basically beat uh, you know ninety percent of the guys that are out there. But the one thing is, is you know that ten percent of the guys out there up in around a little bit before where you're you're going to plan on com- continuing to fight at. I mean, with with all those demons, I guess, behind you, with all that drama, with all that BS behind you, how do you get 
prepared for that 10%. You know who I'm talking about. We're talking about a guy you right, were calling right. out two years ago, oh, Mayweather, oh, Pacquiao, oh, Robert got, Guerrero. Yeah. These guys that got I, the belt. I look at it. I look at it like I look at oh, the only way I get prepared for the, prepare for that is just do what I do best, and that's just run, train, spar, practice on my game, stay clean, and I just think just being me and doing what I do best. I can't beat somebody else. I, I mean, I I really believe that I can do that, and I and and only way I'm gonna ever know that is if I get into get a chance to do it. And then Saturday's the Saturday's the first step, you know, get out here. Dominate this fight, get get a win, and come back and fight again soon. It's like February, hopefully everything goes right, and I get a fight and get some somebody gives me an opportunity. You know, why would they give me an opportunity? I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm not a promoter. I'm a fighter. Why would they give me? I don't know. I have a good record. I was a former champ. That's all I could think of, and I'll fight anybody. You know. Paulie, let me ask you this, man. One more thing, and I'm gonna finish it. I apologize, rest of the guys. I apologize, Paulie. One more thing. You go in Saturday night. Egg Rhyme, you get a, a big, you know, an impressive statement-making victory over him. Monday morning, you know, the boxing world's talking about, you know, you're back in the saddle, you're back in the in the title pictures. What prevents Paul Spadafora from fighting on HBO and Showtime if you get that impressive victory on Saturday night? In your opinion, I mean, you're 46 and 0. How come they haven't done it lately? How come they haven't reached out to to offer the that? only thing that, that I could the only thing that I could think of is is maybe my style, maybe like a hard fight. Maybe I'm crafty. I don't know. That's the only thing I can think of. Maybe my game. Like there's a lot of guys that stayed away from a lot of a lot of people. Not saying that anybody ever stayed away from me. I'm just I'm just giving you what what I know in boxing. You know what I mean? There's a lot of guys that could have took like Vernon Force when he was coming up. People didn't want to fight him. They I think Vernon could have been a great fighter. But I'm just saying, like that's the only thing I can think of. Maybe my style. Maybe I'm hard to hit. Maybe you know what I'm saying. I, I really feel that that's the only thing that that would be. I don't know. Uh, what, what else? Maybe maybe um, you would think. Like, I would think like this. Like my comeback story. I, I would think that's a serious comeback. If I get to a get to a chance to fight for a title, I'm coming from the. I'm coming from the penitentiary. I'm coming from down and out. You know what I mean? Like out, out, and I come back. People want to see that or hear about that anyway. Like I, when I go to when I when you sit here. And, and you hear people coming into schools and stuff. These people had trouble growing up. They come up, boom, next thing you know, he gets the chance. He, and people want to hear that. That's the only thing I can think of that can get me to fight, you know? I, I, I agree, Chan. Hey, Paul, it's Chris Guns. How you doing? Hey, what's going on? Wanted to know, at the age of 37, when your game is reflexes and speed like yours was, do you notice a... a at, at the age of 37, when when speed goes and it's usually the first thing to go, do you do you try to substitute, maybe add more power in your game when your obvious loss of speed is either happening or is right around the corner? Yeah, you definitely do. Like just try to work on your positioning and stuff like that. You know what I mean? It's just like being like for me, I I, I like I I look at it like I, my maybe maybe my speed. Is back a little bit, but I can't. But I'm I'm in better positions. I set myself up. I put myself in different spots, and I'm sitting down on my punches a little bit more. Maybe I like maybe maybe uh, you know I pra- practice. A lot. I like it on the inside anyway. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I know you were training with Tommy Ankello early in your career. I think you trained a little with Pernell Whitaker too. Who's training you now for this fight? Tommy. Tommy is. Oh, is he? You're back with Tommy. Yeah. Yeah. And what is it about Tommy that, that you long for and that you realize you're better off with Tommy? He like he he knows my style, you know. I was with him for years and he just like got me and it, and it's fun. It's like being in the gym, it's having fun. It's, uh, you got to bring that out. I I feel like you got to lo- you got to love to do what you're doing. And Tommy helps helps that out a lot. Yeah, it helps with being creative too and stuff and and just yeah. imagining situations. Heard you get into a little beef with Paul Malignaggi. Where's that come from? No, I was. It, it took it. The, they took it the wrong way. Like I don't. Have the, no, I, he's a he's a hell of a fighter. I just want to get a chance to fight somebody. You know what I mean? They mentioned it. Well, you know, I, I wasn't. Ever, they mentioned well, Hatton. They was gonna plan on fighting Hatton. And I'm like, yo, I'm saying, well, if Hatton said he he's retired, he don't want to fight. Why wouldn't they pick me to fight? You know what I mean? 
Like, why wouldn't they pick me? I said, well, that's what if I come out, if I come out here Saturday a winner, like I think that would make a good fight for every for everybody. Absolutely would. Good luck, man. Appreciate it. Hey Paul, how you doing? This is Ali Vasquez. What's up? Hey Paul, you know um, Frank mentioned earlier about the ten percent guys that are, uh, you know, you gotta be prepared for. I mean, out of those guys, who would you want to face? You know, out of the top tier uh, welterweights. I really wouldn't care to tell you the truth. I mean, there, there's all, all there's a lot of good fights out there. Danny Garcia, he's a hell of a fighter. Good punches hit right in front of you. It's good style for me, I would think. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, how do you, how do you how could I even answer that? You know what I mean? Like I, I don't I, I'm at a point in my life that I don't I would like to fight anybody. You know what I'm saying? I think I just want to be out there. I'm, I'm like you said, I'm 37 years old. I want to I want to get the opportunity to be like, yo, I fought this dude, beat this dude. Like, listen, I'm, this is the dude. You know what I mean? That's like a dream of mine. And, and you mentioned Danny Garcia, who's also from Pennsylvania, Philadelphia. You being from uh, Pittsburgh area, uh, how huge would that fight be in the state of Pennsylvania? I think it would be huge. I mean, obviously, I got to get back to that to that um, do what, do good on Saturday, and hopefully, the vibe and boxing, you know, because like 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 my man said earlier, like I've been up and down, up and down, up and down. When the people that really believe, oh, he's really back, you know what I'm saying? So I get a back, I get a um, win on Saturday, look good, look impressive. And people start believing, like, yo, this kid's really, really here to fight. Maybe, maybe he can do something. Here. You know what I mean? Yep. And uh, last question: A- After uh, Saturday, uh, if you, you know, come successful, obviously that you probably are going to. Uh, how quick do you want to get inside the ring for maybe a tuna that can lead to a world championship fight? I, I, I don't know. And like, like six to eight weeks. Like, well, I don't, I don't, I don't know why. How many tuna skins you could possibly have in life? You know what I mean? Like I don't, I I would like wish I can get a shot right now. Like you know what I mean? I want to win on yep. Saturday, but what would make me like I don't know. Like the guy asked me, what, 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 how do you, how do you get uh, how how are you able to say that yo I deserve a shot? I don't know how to say that. I'm not the promoter. I'm a fighter. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I feel that I'm 46 and other. If you think if you're a champion, that would look at me like yo he's 46 and other. Let's get the you know what I'm saying? Like yo. He, he beat everybody. It's a good record. Even if you think I can't fight, well, let's give this dude a shot. He got it. It's a good. If I can't fight, that's a good record. Let's, you know what I mean? Let's get him out the way. You feel what I'm saying? Oh yeah. That's how. Well, that's how I would look at it. Like. Well, thanks for your time, Paul, and uh, good luck on Saturday. Okay. Thanks a lot, guys. Hey, Paul. Hey, Paul. Hey, Paul. Hey, Mark. A couple questions. Um. You know, being that you, you are 37, um, do you feel that you're young 37? I mean, I guess one of, uh, if you want to count blessings from being out of the ring as much as you have been, you really haven't uh, been in many wars or, you know, been like, uh, you know, been uh, beat up at all as, you know, most 37s at some uh, at some point in their career are. Uh, you, you subscribe to that theory? Oh. Hey, are you there? We might. I don't know if we lost him for a second. Hold on. No, nah, he's there. Paul, are you there? Or did we? Oh, we're, just, we're just having a heck of a technical uh, difficult evening this evening. Yeah, no, we're, we lost him momentarily. Um, possibly a, you know, come on, a cell, cell phone error, man. That's the cell phone uh, section. But, no, look, I, I say, I guess, uh, Abrams. I'm not Paul Spider for but I'm going to try my best to uh, to answer that question in, in the meantime in, until he comes back. No, I think that's the best thing. And as I mentioned to him, I said he's a guy who can fight in his sleep. I mean, regardless of what anybody thinks of Paul, Paul Spider for the the guy has you know knows boxing. I mean, this is what he came up doing his entire life was boxing, and. In in the case of, you know, him not taking any beatings, I think that makes it even better uh, for him. You know, I don't see anybody, you know, don't get me wrong, he's had some close fights in his career, and if you look back, there, there a lot of them were close, but he's also put on some clinics against some very good fighters, 
and I think that's the the best part about him. He's always shown a good good chin. If I'm not mistaken, Mark, I know you you know you're a, an avid tape collector, um, and then you probably have a ton of Paul Spatafora fights in your collection. But has he ever um, been dropped to your recollection in a fight? I don't know about, I don't know about dropped, uh, but the Doran fight was that that was a pretty high impact fight. Other than that, I can't remember uh, too many others he he's been in. And and yeah, no, and I think you know, as I said, I think you're right. I think you're right. Two years ago, even on this show, we actually sparked something when we had Paul Spatafora on the show. I mean, we brought Paul Spatafora on the show out of nowhere, and it was when the the talks of him potentially being Floyd Mayweather's uh, next opponent when he eventually picked, I think it was Victor Ortiz, if I'm not mistaken. And what went down in that was, you know, he obviously didn't get the fight. You know, people tried to, people brought up the sparring session between himself and Floyd Mayweather, and it didn't get to where we thought it would go. But I say like this, look, HBO, I don't know in a main event just yet. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if it's a main event. I think he needs, you know, Doran is throughout his comeback. I think he does. He needs an impressive victory against uh, Egberon this Saturday night. I think he has the opportunity to. I think, you know, even even with his style to go out there and put that clinic. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of good fights. I and mean, like I said, to answer that question on behalf of Paul, as I have no right to do, I think for the simple fact that he is a clinical type of fighter and he hasn't been, you know, in too many wars and, and the age factor. I mean, this is a guy I think he can train himself. I just think he needs just motivation to get himself back in the top peak form. And I think, uh, you know, hopefully we see it. Hopefully for a 47-0 and guy after Saturday night, after his victory, um, we, uh, we, we see, you know, something special. We see him on television getting his opportunity to perform. But, look, I, 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 we're not going to be joined. I think we lost Paul for the moment. For the time being, I see if we'll get him back. I apologize to anybody who's on the line who wanted to speak to him. But Paul, I think uh, we dealt with a a uh, cellular device problem. But uh, we're going to be bringing on one of uh, the most exciting fighters in boxing. I think it's uh, another guy we don't get an opportunity to see as much as we'd like uh, on television because I, you know, his style is all action. His style, you know, is, is all excitement, and it's, it's definitely an honor to bring him on the show. He'll be competing uh, this Saturday night in West Virginia live on GFL.TV. Uh, earlier this year, he had a spectacular fight. If you've heard about it, if you if someone told you, you've read about it, if you actually seen it, you have an opportunity to see it. Him and his opponent, Emmanuel Lucero, put on a sensational fight and ended and a majority decision victory for our next guest. A lot of people say, you know, I I know Lucero thought he won the fight. Maybe some other people thought Lucero won the fight. Maybe, you know, there's people out there that thought our next guest won the fight. So it's going to be a definitive answer this Saturday night on GFL.TV. But without further ado, welcoming super featherweight contender coming out of Pennsylvania, ranking Pennsylvania, Mr. Monty Mesa Clay. Welcome to the show, champ. How are you doing tonight? Hello. Oh man, we're we're we are not doing good. After that introduction, and I got maybe maybe he didn't like the introduction. Monty, you with us though? Monty, yeah. let me check. Monty, yeah, you with us? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Man, what's going on, bro? How are you doing tonight, yes, champ? How's it going? I'm real good. Thank you for the introduction. I greatly appreciate it. I mean, I can't thank you enough for that, man. I'm one of the most exciting fighters I really am, and I appreciate the uh, the, the props. <laughs> it's true, Monty. Let me ask you this, man. I mean, I mean, I know you got to agree. I know you're the type of guy who likes to get in there. You know, you you don't want to waste any time, man. You want to you want to achieve the best you know possible scenario for your career as a professional fighter. You know, go in there, do your thing. And I think you're one of the best fighters that are out there that doesn't get a chance to be seen, especially, you know, you're a guy, I, I say it like this, you're a guy in a smaller weight class that fights excitingly in the, like a, a guy in the, the, the higher weight class. And I don't know if that makes much sense. I know the smaller weight classes are more high impact, fast paced, but you're a guy like if you were to get two, two super middleweights in there just banging nonstop, you're that type of guy. But you got the finesse, you got the skill, 
Emmanuel Lucero is your, your opponent again this Saturday night in West Virginia at the Mountaineer Casino Racetrack and Resort. GFL.TV is the place to be for 13 bucks for everybody to see you in this co-feature. Let's talk about it, man. Let's talk about this summer, this past summer, that fight for you and Emmanuel Lucero, the first fight. Okay, yes. Uh, well, Mr. Clay, a lot of punches, man. Lucero, a lot of punches. Um, it was exciting. It was great. That's my type of a fight, though, you dig? Um, and I, I'm looking forward to this rematch. You know, I appreciate the um, I appreciate him uh, uh, accepting the invite and wanting to do it again, man. And uh, so I can put a, a how you say a, a quotation mark on on, on and, and go get him. I gotta get the knockout. You know, they're saying uh, I won, he won. You know, and so to put down all of the uh, 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 questions, you know, I gotta get rid of him. You know, and it was he was a blood and guts fighter, man. He came to fight and actually. But like I said, I was that's what that's my type of, of fight. I'm uh, I'm interested in it, and it was fun, you know. And I, I enjoy hard work, if that makes sense. I really do. I enjoy hard work, and he brought me right where I what I deserve, what I love to be at. And, and I feel like just a lot of people. This is the one. This is a fight that the uh, you know one of the fights of the year. One of the fight of the year candidates this year. And I mean, what what would it be for you? I mean, to go in there. I mean, whether it lasts. Uh, you know, from bell to bell, from the first bell to the to the expected last bell. I think you guys are going eight rounds in this fight. I mean, I would love to see. I would love. I think. I think eight rounds doesn't do anybody justice. I think ten, but but ten rounds, twelve <laughs> rounds. If it went that far, I think that might be illegal. Uh, if, it, if it's anything to where the first fight was, but I, I got to answer like this. Yeah, man. You know, you, you you're going in there uh, again with this tough guy. You say you got to put him out of there. GFL.TV, we get to see it again. But what would it mean to you if you go out there, if it lasts six rounds and it's six high intense rounds, you come out with the, the stoppage, knockout victory, and you got two fights of, the, fights of the year candidates with you. I mean, is that what you're also going gunning for? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I work very, very hard. I mean, I, I'm right here. I really live that real fighter's life, you know. Um, and so it would mean a lot to me to get rid of it. And I believe, not believe. I know, man. I can get rid of him. I can get rid of him before before eight. Um, and I'm I'm almost guaranteeing that I will be able to. I've been on my uh, my job. I've been working hard, and uh, that's the plan. Now I'm gonna stick to the program. You know, I'm not going out, and I'm not going to try. You know, uh, over exhaust myself and just be swinging. I'm a smart fighter. I'm a very smart fighter, man. And when I'm in in war, I can keep my cool. I can keep my uh, my train of thought, and that's that's the objective. We're gonna get rid of him, man. That, that's my plan, and it's been. And like my last fight, in preparation, you know, uh, I'm not the only one. A lot of fighters can uh, relate when I say that uh, dealing with things outside the ring, you know, just living, normal living, trying to make this thing happen. I've been grinding for a long time at this, you know, so I wasn't 110% Mesa Clay shape, but I came 110% gave you the Mesa Clay show that I've been given. But now I'm going to show you a lot of boxing. I'm going to show, I'm gonna just show you how I'm a thinking fighter also uh, with this fight right here. Hello. No, we're here. We're here. I was just giving giving that time frame for other people to jump in, but you know, like I said, man, people to, they like that dead air in the <laughs> in the meantime. But no, I say I guess, man, you're you're fighting once again. You're fighting close into your hometown. You expect a uh, a, a support system for yourself. You expect your fans, your supporters, to uh, show up in West Virginia to uh, cheer you on and support you this Saturday night. Oh yes, sir. Absolutely. Um, you gotta understand. I mean, I started my career at the Mountaineer Racetrack, so actually, it's a homecoming for me. You know, they're um, anxious to see me, and not only that, um, it, it'll be an honor to also be on uh, the same court with uh, my man Paul Spetta for you know, with the return of Paul, you know, the Pittsburgh kid. Um, I was at the Mountaineer years ago when Paul won his title, and from that moment on, I knew Mr. Clay knew that he would be a fighter. You know, so years later. Uh, to be able to perform on the same stage with him and uh, at the, uh, uh, you know, uh, and, and with the same, him being a, an exciting fighter, the same as I'm an exciting fighter, it's going to be, it, it's going to be uh, fireworks, man, and it's going to be, a, uh, it's an honor. I mean, I can't say it enough. It's an honor. All right. I got to ask you this too, man. Oh, Gad, Gad, Elliot, because I wasn't going to give you guys a chance to let all that dead air come from Gad, bro. Yeah. No, uh, hey, Monty, uh, this is Ali Vasquez. How you doing? Uh, yes, sir. I'm pretty glad I'm going to see you. Good, good. I actually want to talk about um, things that you actually done outside the ring. I know in the past uh, you let Trin talk to the youth and, you know, in the area that you're from. 
and stuff like that. Uh, are you still doing that? Are you still going to like, group homes and correctional institutions and, 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 you know, and talking positive to the youth? Oh, yes, sir, absolutely. That's what I do. I feel obligated. I feel very – I feel obligated to, to – to have to do that, you know, I can recall when uh when uh someone a champion or someone of a uh, greater caliber would come and speak to me and what it meant to me. So I do, I feel obligated to show you. Look, man, let me come out. It's not we, too many times we we promote the negative things, you know, and we glorify the negative things. And I'm letting them still look, man. The negative, a lot of negative things got me in a lot of negative trouble. You know, it made my life hard to this. I'm a fighter to this day because of a lot of uh, bad mistakes that I made. And I'm not uh, how I say um. Uh, I'm not wishing anything I done and redo it. What's done is done, you know. I didn't, I never hurt anyone or anything, but I would have, I would have made some changes, you know. So I'm trying to, you know, guide these kids and uh, different people uh, another way, man. It, it's just good. I'm God fearing also, so you know, we, we, like I said, too many times we go after the the, the 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 negative things and show that you can make it if you do negative negative like this. But now you can. It is very well possible to make it be successful being positive. And stand on the right track. So yes, um, I'd still do that. Absolutely. That's great. Um, you're fighting Emmanuel Cerro on, on Saturday. If you beat him again, you know you're you're going to be on a six fight winning streak. It, you know, is is there any fighter that after that you want to fight and that's maybe in the top ten to maybe get you you know on course for a title shot, or do you want to go straight to a title? For 126. Uh, obviously, I mean, I would love to go straight to whatever it takes. You know, you know, I, I put everything in God's hands. You know, the funny thing about this thing is, I know nothing about these guys like this. And I know I'm trying to run my weight class. I'm trying to dominate it. So these guys, they know me, but I know nothing. I can't tell you who holds the title here. Who holds? The, I don't know these guys. I don't. You know, I'm in camp with some with, with guys. Uh, a lot of times, I do camp with different fighters, and I can tell the difference between me and the average fighter or me and every other fighter. And the difference is I go through camp, I mean, cool, collective. They were watching. I mean, yeah, my dude, my trainer does that work. That's my trainer's job. Bring it back to the bring it back to the gym and let's study. Tell me what I'm supposed to do and let's put it together. I'm pretty much who I am going to be as a fighter. You know what I'm saying? So I, I go through my camp cool, calm, collective, and I don't worry about these guys. I don't know about these guys, so I'm screaming on all of them. There's no one particular. Whichever one's going to put me in the best position, that's who I'm coming at. So if you feel some type of way about what I'm saying, then I'm talking to them. You understand what I'm saying? They know me. I don't know them. But I'm screaming on the whole weight class and every weight class that this, this, uh, Clay is going to step in. Right. And I and I mentioned uh, 126. And I'm, I've, you're actually not at 126 anymore. You're actually at... Uh, are you fighting in a catch weight um, on Saturday, or, or is that a straight up uh, 130? Uh, no, we're going to fight at a catch. I'm not exactly sure. It's, uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be like 32, uh, just a catch weight. Since it's not a title, I'm not obligated to uh, come in at 130. But, um, yeah, I'm fighting at, at 130 now, not 20. It was a little getting a little hard to suck that extra four pounds. Uh, I mean, I'm not the only one. My fellow fighters can understand where I'm coming from when I say that extra few pounds means a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, thank you, Monte, and good luck on Saturday. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Monte, hey, man, we, we, we definitely definitely appreciate that, man. Like I said, dude, you're you're definitely one of the favorite fighters. Me, me a, being a PA guy from Philadelphia, uh, I'm looking forward to everything that's going to go down this Saturday night, man. I hope uh, we get to see you on one of the big networks sometime in 2013. Emmanuel Lucero stands in your way. Uh, Mountaineer Racetrack and Resort, Chester, West Virginia, GFL.TV, only 13 bucks. I mean, this card is is hot, dude. This, this card's slamming right now. And, and if anybody, like I said, I, I know you can attest to it. As a boxing fan, man, with, even with you watching yourself, Spadafora, you're going to see Spadafora, and uh, Egg Rhyme in the in the main event, you you and Lucia in the co main event, uh Jericio and, and, and his opponent, I ain't gonna try to pronounce his name. Co feed another co feature. I mean you got some, some talented guys on here tonight and you know, definitely it's uh, uh awesome for you to be on this card. And I think it's again like this, I think you guys are definitely front runners for fight of the night and if it's anything like what went down in July um, mm -hmm. fight of the year, possibly. But, uh, hey, Monty, let me ask you this, too, man. Any place we can follow you on the social network, social media scene, 
uh, this way the fans and uh, anybody that needs to get in touch with you can you know, send some messages and well wishes to you. Yes, sir. I got to get big. I'm not huge on the social network, but they're telling me I need to start doing it. But you can get at me on Twitter at Monty Mesa Clay. Uh, what's that, Twitter? <laughs> Is that, anyway, that's me. It's Monty Mesa Clay on Twitter. You can get at me on uh, Facebook. Monty, my life's a movie, Mesa Clay. Man, it's real. My life is a movie. Uh, the things I go through, I can't. you can't make this stuff up, you know. Uh, so that's how you can uh, reach out to me. And uh, Saturday night, man, uh, get ready for the fireworks. Cause Mesa Clay is well prepared. Um, I'm blessed. I'm covered by the blood, and I'm ready. I appreciate you saying you see me on the 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 the, the big networks because that's what I've been gunning for, and that's what I'm aiming for. Mr. Clay, who better to have on national television? I'm seeing a lot of these guys out here not performing at you know at, at my level. Period. You know, an exciting level. We're in the game of entertainment, and that's what I do. I come out and I entertain, man. I'm here. I'm here, Mr. Clay, Saturday night in 2013. We're doing it big, the big stage. You got no. You said it like this, man. Look, you're at. I think at this point, you got to be social networking right now, man. You got to get on that Twitter more often. We see you on Twitter. Yes. Start hitting these, hitting everybody up, man. I mean, I know you're going in. You've got a big, you got a big, big victory ahead of you. And and like I said, man, they don't know nothing about it right now. They don't know something about. It. I mean, you're, look, you're a vet in this industry. You're a vet in this business over ten years. Yes, sir. You know what I'm yes, saying? Sir. So, yes, sir. Yes, sir. HBO, I think, get ready. Showtime. Um, you know, even if it's ESPN, you know what I'm saying, or even if it's hey, back on GFL dot TV, even GFL, you know, GFL, we're we're happy to have you on the show this Saturday night. Uh, but get ready for your um, Monty Mesa Clay 2013 uh, champ. We appreciate your time tonight. God bless, and uh, hope to get you back on the show again, man. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. If you're not familiar, get familiar. Team Mesa Clay, man, we come. There it is, my man. Have a great night. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Good night. All right, here, look, I don't want to be – I know Tim Tim Tudges saw it. I don't want to be the only one who, who talks about it. But Monty Mesa Clay, and this is, I think I said, I think this right here is the, the the front runner. Rufus, are you even here, Rufus? Yeah, I'm here. Why haven't you talked? I know you're pissed off right now, but why haven't you talked tonight? Well, why would I be, be pissed off, Frank? Oh, because you didn't talk. You didn't say one word all fucking night, bro. Come on, man. You got to get in there. I was expecting Roy Jones to get a freaking ass reaming, but you didn't even get it. Yeah, uh, sorry. Uh, just, just not. Rufus has still has too much turkey, and um, and uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, cranberry sauce up in his uh, up in his belly right now from this past Thanksgiving. I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, if you're listening to the show right now, I know we're having a little bit of problem uh, with the with the website viewing. And um, you know, I appreciate everybody. I apologize. I, I wasn't paying attention to what was going down on Facebook. I've been messaging a lot of people on Facebook, and I wasn't looking back at the response messages. But uh, we are. So you know, in this case, hang tight. Go to. I can't even get out the, um, the the link. It's so long. But hey, if you can't if you can't get the show and you're on the website, just click the little player box on the side, and the little player box will take you where you need to be. And um, in, in that case, we're, we're still here. We're still live. We're going to be having one more guest that'll be joining us momentarily. Actually, two more guests. Right. Yeah. What's Frank, up? Frank, I got this for you. It's www.blondtalkradio.com backslash all hyphen time great backslash 2012 backslash 11 backslash 27 backslash ATG hyphen radio hyphen presents hyphen under hyphen the hyphen ring hyphen boxing. Hyphen Radio. There we go. Oh, wow, man. I mean, you know, dude, that's e- easy said than done, guys. Um, hey, hey, it is what it is. I think we're having a good show tonight, or maybe not. But, um, you know, appreciate all the guests that have joined us up until this point so far. I know we're going a little bit over. And, uh, you know, just to stay tuned, we'll be joined in the next few moments, hopefully, by that. But in the meantime, look, we'll, 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 we'll detract away from this Saturday night's card. And I want to I get real quick. I mean, we got Wednesday to talk predictions for the Showtime car for every big event that's going down this Saturday night. Um, let's let's go into it. A lot of people calling it another potential fight of the year, Robert Guerrero. And I, I thought Robert Guerrero looked friggin' I'm a, I think I'm a believer now. Everything Robert Guerrero, Mario Serrano, and Louis DeCubis Jr. have been saying, I think has come true, man. I said Robert Guerrero, at least for the first five rounds, on Saturday night, looked like he could beat anybody. 
and I mean anybody, at 147 pounds. Disagree with me if you may, or, uh, you know, send in a rebuttal to what I just said. Or nobody talk at all. You look, anybody, got, any, anybody got an opinion this, from this Saturday? Man? Mike, Mike Dawn is amazing right now because of the outcome of that fight. Well, 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 hold, 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 hold. Let, let me, let me uh, start in here. First of all, fight your candidate, um, no nonsense. I agree. It was, it, was, it was a nice fight, but, you know, for the announcers and some of the writers to say fight your candidate, it was a nice fight. It was It was a good fight, but... There was too much wrestling and mauling and you know that stuff. There, there wasn't there wasn't a great flow of the fight. But to talk about Guerrero, absolutely, he looked like a. I was shocked when I was saying how he was just beating down Berto and just he was, you know, the perceived smaller guy, you know. And Berto's been you know one forty seven. He's fought higher actually, fought higher as an amateur, and uh, you got this guy who. You know, featherweight and lightweight, and only one fight in welterweight before this. I was shocked the way he just pinned Berto against the ropes all night. I, I still can't believe that. It was a good fight, you know. Um, Guerrero did his thing. I just think that Andre Berto kind of helped him out. Andre Berto does not know how to fight in close. I mean, he he showed it against Victor Ortiz. He showed it again again against uh, Guerrero. He just made, he made Guerrero look good. Although I think at the end he was kind of catching up, catching with the uppercut and the straight right and whatnot. But I, I you know, I just think that, and I hate to say this, but I think Andre Guerrero was kind of tailor made for for uh, Guerrero inside fighting. And and I agree with Mark. I don't think it was a fight of the year. I think it was like a mauling mauling type of fight. It was an entertaining fight, but I don't think it was fight of the year. I mean, I, fight of the year for me. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Real quick, let me ask you this. It might not have been fight of the year, and I agree with both of you guys on that. Definitely not fight of the year. You know, Alvarado, Rios was a good fight. And there was a few other fights, I think, can take that claim. But, I mean, what I want to ask you guys, that first five rounds that you saw Robert Guerrero, and, I mean, him, him digging down deep, showing a spectacular chin. And I said, it looks like if he, if he can fight like that for 12 rounds from now on, I think he can beat anybody at 147. And I said it. Including Floyd Mayweather? Hey, who knows how Floyd Mayweather? And look, everybody knows my um, my. Uh, I don't. Know, I can't even say. I'm not going to say affiliation, but my you know support for Floyd Mayweather that's out there, including Floyd Mayweather. I think it'll be a, a highly competitive fight. I mean, who knows? I don't know. But wait, hey, time out, guys. I think we do have our next guest on the line. I'm going to check uh, Elwood, the engineer, to check that out. I mean, who said that? Even Floyd Mayweather. Was that you, Elliot? Was that you? Or was that, uh, that Mark? That, that, that'd be Mark. Hey, Mark. Mark. Okay. Let's let's we'll leave out Floyd Mayweather. I mean, it depends on how how the the nine months or the, I'm sorry, the three months of of jail time, or uh, his the inactivity, or if he's aged. Robert Guerrero looked like a big, fresh, and and I'm talking like prepared fighter for anything. And I mean, there is not. Really, the only people that are calling out Floyd Mayweather well, are the people that want all, paychecks. I, I think. Him, I think. I give him I all think, the. He fought. A, he fought. He fought a terrific. He fought a. T- he had a game plan. You know whether you know like Ellie. Ellie just said he had that he maybe he spotted something that Berto can't fight in close. He had. He had a game plan was to just get on top of him, and I, I guess and they say I guess the, I guess the phrase is getting that ass, and he did that. And he did it to, per, you know, pretty much perfection, you know, especially with the first half of the fight. And uh, you got give, I give him all the credit in the world. You know, he doesn't, you know, need my validation, but I give him I give him credit for, for coming up with a game plan and, and sticking to it, and it, it worked to a T. All right, well, look, listen, guys, we're going, to get back, we're going to get back to that. If you didn't jump in in the beginning, guys, you know, in the beginning when I mentioned that, there was, there was plenty of dead air, enough time for everybody. But, look, guys, we're going to get into our next guest. We're going to get more into that, that, uh, that whole situation this past weekend. I want to talk more Robert Guerrero. Uh, but in this case, we're going to, we're going to go back. Tonight's, tonight's theme 
is is basically this Saturday night what's going down Mountaineer Casino Racetrack and Resort in Chester, West Virginia, but most importantly live on GFL.tv. We already talked to the main event competitor, Paul Spadafore. We also spoke to Monty Nesta Clay. Now we're going to be speaking to a another talented individual, and I think the uh, that's, that's another theme tonight. we got plenty of talent on here, and uh, we're bringing one of Youngstown, Ohio's finest, and he is a, a uh, lightweight prospect slash contender on his way up. He's got a tough opponent whose last name I definitely cannot, cannot pronounce, but this guy is uh, going to go in there and put on a show for everybody on GFL.TV, and I'm talking about Jake, the Bull, Jericio. Jake, you with us, man. How you doing tonight, bro? Yeah, I'm here. I'm doing good. How are you guys doing? Good. How's it going, man? How's everything going up? I mean, look, the, the road to this Saturday night against uh, Peter Oluouch, I want to say. I think I got that wrong. I think you might know a little bit better than I do. Peter Olich. Yeah, that that's pretty oh, much right. Um, Everything's going good. You know, we're just uh, working hard, man. Like I always do, I always give 100% when I'm uh, in the gym, just uh, preparing for this guy like it's a world title fight. I'm going to go out there and just uh, fight with everything I got, man. Now, look, you, you, you're, in there, you're in there with a guy this Saturday who's been in there with some tough guys. He's, he's went rounds. I mean, you know, the only thing on his, in his career, he's been stopped once in his career, but he's been – he's went the distance with, with, with some tough guys. I mean, this guy's been in there 12-rounders. He's fought all over the world. Uh, you're going you're – go, you're coming into the fight against, you know, uh, coming off of a, a very tough – uh, heartbreaking, controversial, close. I mean, you could tell us what it was uh, in your battle against Michael Clark, you know, former world world title, uh, world, excuse me, world title con- uh, challenger. You know, t- coming in off of that, man, Michael Clark, that loss to Michael Clark that went down, uh, how does the rebound coming in there? Uh, you know, everything's been positive um, since that night down there with Michael Clark. I just realized some things that I was doing in my training that I need to just get right, uh, you know, just stick with my trainer from down in California where I was growing, where I was getting better. So um, that's what we did. We made them adjustments, and uh, I've been working with him now for, oh, uh, man, that was probably 14 weeks ago or quite some time ago, and we've just been, uh, you know, working hard, just preparing um, for quite some time now. We was actually preparing for a, a fight that I, I missed out in, in Minnesota on because the car got canceled. But that Michael Clark fight is behind me. It, uh, you know, it was a disappointing night. I just I didn't prepare correctly. Um, you know, I went in there ready for a fight, and the kid uh, was ready to box. He, he boxed and moved and, and was able to slip on my shots, and uh, I couldn't just get off the way I wanted to. So, um but everything's been positive since then, man. We've just been working hard, and, and I know i got a tough guy in front of me. But, uh, you know, I've been out of California, and I've been in the ring with uh, a lot of these, these world contenders that you see that are out there right now. Um, some of the top guys in the lightweight division I've been in the ring with, uh, that John, John Molina. i got some pretty good sparring out there with him and, and a few other names, uh, Ponce de Leon. So, uh, you know, um, I feel very comfortable, very ready. Um, I definitely know that it's going to be a, a, a great fight come Saturday night. But uh, I feel like I, 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 I've prepared the best that I can, and, and I'm, I'm nothing but ready. And I'm, uh, I'm going to do all that I can do to just try to get a victory. And Lord willing, I can go in there, stay safe, and uh, raise my hand at the end of the night. No, well, and, and, and Jake, let me tell you this, man. Look, Michael Clark has given a lot of people a lot of problems for a lot of years, man. So, like, you know, that fight's a learning curve. If a, and a close fight could have went either way. It ain't nothing. I think that's just, you know, that's just one of them fights. I think you just get out of your way. You get that disappointment out of your way. And, you know, definitely props to you, man. I mean, there's no there's no shame in, in what went down in that fight. You know, and like I said, man, you're, you're one of the top uh, uh, lightweight prospects that are out there, especially coming out of, Ohio, and let me ask you this: let's, let's refer back to your town. You're not too far from Chester, West Virginia, living in Youngstown. So you know Youngstown definitely a strong boxing city. Uh, you know Ray Boom Boom Mancini, obviously Kelly Pavlis, so many more coming out of that town. Uh, what, do you, what do you expect? I mean, t- tell us about you know 
your um, experience and, and, and your feelings towards boxing in Youngstown and, and the, uh, the support system that you expect to have come this Saturday night in Chester, West Virginia? Uh, Youngstown is is a great city for boxing, you know. Um, every time we've had a show up here, uh, we did any shows back home, you know, the fans do come out. They do come out. They support, man. They're always there. And uh, last time we came down and fought at West Virginia uh, at the, the Harvin uh, Mountaineer Casino, um, I mean, it's just uh, they come down. Uh, I think we, we had almost um, – a couple, uh, uh, probably at least over 100 some people. We sold almost $10,000 worth of tickets. The guys came down. They they're supportive. The Youngstown area, they they do. They just love boxing, you know. Uh, and you know, Lord willing, if I could just uh, keep climbing this ladder and uh, work my way up, you know, I would I would love to just uh, just be up there with some of them top guys that came out of Youngstown, like Bray and Kelly Pavlik and everyone, and uh, you know, maybe give them. Uh, Somebody else to latch on to, man, try to bring some world titles back here, uh, back home. But I expect Saturday down there in Mountaineer uh, just to be just another sold-out crowd, just like it was last time I fought down there. Right now, uh, I think uh, we're around the same ballpark on uh, moving some tickets. we got a, a great fan base coming down, and, um, you know, we're just ready to put on a show, man. Uh, that's what it's about. You know, uh, I know that uh, Peter Olich has been working uh, hard just preparing for this fight. I have been. I've seen uh, all the other guys that are fighting on the card. I've seen Spada Four, and I've seen Monty in the gym the other day working. I know them guys are prepared and ready to fight. And it's just, it's going to be, a, I think it's going to be an awesome show, man, a good time. I think, I'm you know, excited. I think it's a, I, I, Jake, I think it's a great show, man. And, and, you know, I'm looking forward to it. I, I mean, I'll be honest with you, it's not just because, you know, the working relationship we here at ATG Radio have with GFL. But, you know, it's, it's, we, we, we haven't had a lack of boxing, but, you know, as far as, like, the name power, the star power, the, the prospect, you know, some, some potential legends, some great fights, and it does. It looks like it. And, and I'm kind of glad that, you know, definitely following your career, following you coming up from there, you know, a lot of people from Ohio have spoken very highly of you. And, you know, to go in there, and i got to answer like this, this Saturday night, you get the showcase for you know fans around the world on GFL TV for only twelve ninety nine under thirteen bucks. But we mentioned like this, like Ray Boom Boom Mancini, legend. There's you know if you're if you've been a boxing fan for however long, you know about Ray. Uh, Kelly Pavlik, he's currently active, comes from the hometown. You do, you know, he's, he's the prodigal son of of Youngstown at the moment, as you can say. But you know, he's on a comeback. Of sorts, I guess you could say. You know, we've got Andre Ward uh, going down for early 2013. I got to ask you this: from one Youngstown guy to talking about your boy, you know, from from your same city and Kelly Pavlik. What are your thoughts on him and his, you know, title comeback against Andre Ward? What is your prediction going into that fight? And your thoughts? Obviously. You know, uh, honestly, I don't really have any any personal predictions going into the fight. Um, you know, Kelly's his, his own man, and and I wish him the best, man. You know, uh, I hope he can go out there, beat this kid, and and bring the world title back. It, it's only gonna uh, just bring boxing back into Youngstown that much more and build the area back up that much better. You know, I know the kid is loaded with talent. I know he's got power in both of his hands. He's a great fighter. And, uh, you know, I would love to see him go out there and uh, beat Andre Ward. But I also know that Andre Ward is a very talented fighter, and um, he's coming off of some pretty big wins. And, uh, you know, I think that would be that would be a pretty good fight, man. Um, you know, I just I, – I, I really do. I would like to see Kelly beat him. You know, I'd like to see Kelly bring that home. Uh, any predictions on the fight, I don't have any. Uh, I don't want to – What do you think against that. your home team? <laughs> You can't. That's, that's, that's your. That's your. That's your NFL, NBA, uh, and Major League Baseball team wrapped up in the one. I'd have to say Kelly Pavlik. So I know. I know you can't root against them. It would be like me rooting against the Phillies in the World Series. You can't do it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm not. I'm not mad at you about that, Jake. You know. So I'll say like this. Look, I, I'll give my prediction. You know, Kelly Pavlik is. Uh, you know, from a state over where I was born and bred in Ohio, but you know. I I hate to say it, man. I mean, the only the only chance that he has is to uh, to hit this guy like a mule, as he always says. So I don't know if that's going to happen. I think Andre Ward to put on a boxing clinic, much like what happened when he fought uh, Bernard Hopkins. But you know what? At the end of the day, I don't. I'm not the biggest fan of Andre Ward. 
a huge fan of of Kelly Pavlik and you know you know representing my man uh, Jake here who you know, is from Youngstown. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Pavlik. I'm gonna hope he pulls off the upset and it could be you know the shocker of 2013 to kick it off and you know maybe that's what we'll see. But regardless, the thing about Kelly Pavlik, Jake, this is about you, man. I want to give the opportunity for our listeners here this evening to uh, follow you if you are available for them to follow or or check you out, or interact with you on the social media scene? Um, actually, we're working on putting together a website uh, right now, and it actually should be um, up and running here within the next few days, and it would just be jakejuricio.com. And I know my last name is crazy to spell. But no, I, did, I pronounced it, it right. It, I pronounced it right, though. Gricio. I'm Italian. I, 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 the G, the G I U. I've, I've experienced a lot of people with, you know, G I U, beginning in the yeah, name. Yeah. It's, it's an Italian name, right? You're Italian, right? I mean, you can't walk around with Gricio and be, you know, full blooded Irish or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm Italian and Arab. All right. Well, there you go. You're, you're half, but, but, Pop is is Italian, right? Yeah. Yep. There you go. There you go. There you go, my man. Um, no Twitter. I mean, look, dude, you 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 have the potential to become a future world champion. You just said it here, and you don't have Twitter. Everybody knows potential or current or contenders have Twitters, man. You got to be on Twitter talking smack to everybody between 135 pounds and 168 pounds, man. I mean, you got a gun for the the top. You know what I'm saying? Let let Andre Ward if, if, know if he beats Kelly Pavlik, you want next something. But you got to say it on Twitter. Everybody knows that's the spot to be. Yeah, that that's not me, man. Um, you know, It'll honestly, you. if you follow my career, no, nah, that that wouldn't be me. Uh, if you follow my career, man, and you know, the only thing I care about when I go out to that ring come Saturday night is that I honor God with my performance, man, and that I just bring glory to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who have saved my life, man, and, and that's all that I care about. I, I don't, I don't need to talk smack or anything like that. I put my hours in and in the gym, and uh, you know, my performance will show come Saturday night. So, I, I, I had no Twitter for me, no, no smack talker for me. I just go out there and I, I let my hands do the, the talking. All right, well, Jake, look, man, you know, definitely, amen to, to your statement there. Amen to everything you just said there right now. But, whoa, the, what we're going to do Saturday night, uh, I'm going to be watching this live. Uh, I'm going to, uh, as well as Tim Cudges and the rest of the ATG crew, we'll be watching this, this event live. We're going to live tweet in your name regardless. So if you get an opportunity to pop on the Twitter, you'll, you'll hear us talking good things about you and your performance round by round. Uh, that's a bell. And uh, definitely victory for you, you know, this Saturday night. On to bigger and better things come Sunday, I think. And uh, Jake Juricio, my man, the Bull, Youngstown, Ohio's own. Uh, we appreciate it. And, you know, once again, this, you know, I got to give a shout-out real quick one more one more time. I got to give a shout-out to Mark Ankello. Uh, I wish he could have came on here tonight. Uh, we could have had a little bit of fun. I got an opportunity to talk to him earlier on this evening and, you know, had the opportunity to break his balls a little bit. And I think we have fun. We'll get Mark on here in the future. You know, shout out to everybody who's involved in this card uh, this Saturday night. You know, we had the opportunity to speak to uh, Jake here. We had an opportunity to speak to Paul Spadafore, Roy Jones Jr., and Monty Mesa Clay. Um, Jake, all the best to you, man. God bless you, bro. And uh, we look forward to seeing a great, uh, great performance from you this Saturday night, man. All right, thank you, man. God bless you. I appreciate you guys uh, taking the time to uh, talk to me, man. Thank you. Anytime, anytime, man, ATG Radio is your spot, bro. Come here anytime, bro. We would love to talk and get more boxing with you. All right, thank you. Have a good night. Take care. Mark Dan Kelly, All you're right. the man, bro. Thanks, buddy. Have a good night. All right, bye. Bye-bye. All right, there you have it. Once again, final final thing on this is Saturday GFL TV. Twelve ninety nine is the price tag. If you can't be there live at the Mountaineer Racetracks and Casino in Chester, West Virginia, and I'm not even reading that right now. It's stuck in the head. Roy Jones Jr. and TNT Promotions present a sensational amount of boxing. They should at least give uh, ATG the title and give us like a little headline title. Paul Spadafora, Solomon, Egg Grime, he'll be, they'll be going at it in the main event. 
Monty met the clay, Manuel is hero. Uh, hopefully they replay their sensational first fight that happened this past time of the summer. Uh, uh, Jake Jasiro, tough uh, guy who comes to fight. He's in shape, lightweight, so that's going down. There's so many more. Uh, Morgan Fitch, uh, former MMA star Joey Holt, Billy Hutchinson, Jose, Jose Calabero, and um, you also got Angelo Magnone. He'll be in the house tonight. Once again, check it out, GFL.tv. We'll be uh, discussing more of it. Well, I think we're going to have um, Solomon Egber, Egberheim this Wednesday on the show. Uh, but we're going to go on to our next guest 